So let me set this up. We're going to talk about the BBC documentary, Gambling in Las Vegas, the one Louis Thurl did in Las Vegas with me 16 years ago, which is crazy. It's been that long. But I know a lot of you have questions. I know a lot of you wanted to ask stuff. Uh, so here's your chance. Ask me anything you like about the show, and I will answer you. Um, Again, sorry for the amateur hour, but first time going live without my help and my experts, I'll fix it for next time. So if I don't answer your question, please repeat it again and I'll see it in the chat and I will get to it. I already see one. Do you know if Martha is still alive? That is a big question we've been asking ourselves. You know, think about how old she was during the filming. Um, I mean, she's got to be 90 years old now. And, and if she is, she's probably still playing slots somewhere, but I haven't seen her yet. I haven't caught up to her at all. I haven't seen her after the show even. So um, that was a big deal. I, I, I can't tell you that. I don't know yet uh, if she's still alive, but we've been putting our feelers out there to find out. No hosts know about it yet. So yeah, welcome to the newbie channel, Jason R. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Hey, I admit it. I'm learning. Thanks to all of you, though. Uh, Kevin, was there any part of the documentary that you didn't like or didn't agree with when filming? Actually, it was all off the cuff. I mean, Louis is a natural at it. He gets everything out of you. And it's amazing how he can do that. Um, but he's good at it. So I, I enjoyed everything. It was tough because he kept prying me for how much Alan lost. And again, I'll never tell that. But you saw the thousands of dollars he was playing. So you can kind of figure it out yourself. But at the same time, uh, everything went well. Everything was cool. It was all natural. It was just the way it is. And some of you have met me now, so you see everything I said in there is real. Uh, let's see, wh who else? Johnny was gambling with Lewis for hours and hours, and you said that Alan spent a long time playing too. What's the longest gambling session you hosted during that time? Ace of Vegas, thanks for that question, pal. Um, I'll tell you what, Alan, Alan would play for hours. Um, during the filming, though, you know, those were just clips of him playing. So they'd film for probably like 45 minutes of him playing, and they would get enough because he had big bets on there all the time. So in my lifetime, though, I've sat there for 16 hours straight with million dollar players. I mean, where they go down a million, up a million, back down, you'd have swings of a million dollar losses into winning your money back and up a million. I've been there 16 hours before. So it's been a long time. Uh, during that, during that filming, no, we, we sat there a long time, but the filming would only take 45 minutes. You know, when it's a reality show too, think about this. You do a reality show, they usually need 250 hours just to get 48 or 50 minutes worth of stuff that they can use, material they can use. In a documentary, they get pieces everywhere and then just put it all together and they get what they got. So it's awesome. What else? Um, yeah, 16 hours is crazy. Any update, James, any update on a follow-up documentary? or if it could happen. Yes, I talked to Louie actually on Tuesday where we're just we're just talking and getting some feelers out of maybe something he can do here in Vegas. We're gonna stay closely connected and make sure that we talk some more. He knows everybody wants to do this again. So we're gonna see what we can do. Uh, we're gonna see what we can do and maybe do a return to Las Vegas. Maybe it's a total different uh, Vegas episode of maybe Louie just coming back to Vegas and coming to Circa. I'm trying to get him to Circa Resort and Casino. This way he'll get Derek Stevens, our owner on there, myself, some of the uh, new big players I have. I have a couple young guys that would be fun. You'd be able to see the pool. You'd be able to see the restaurants. I think it'd be a, a lot of material that everybody would be interested in. Alan was at, and Scott, Alan wasn't happy losing money when he left, but Still enjoyed you and your hosting. Hey, you better. I'm a good friend of his, and he's godfather to my daughter. But at the same time, Alan played with what he could afford to play with. He never went back and raised the prices of mattresses and stuff like that. Um, 
So he, if he lost money, he went back and he just made a trip maybe a few months later than he normally would. But he, I never seen him go broke and it didn't affect his business. Like everybody, some of the rumors were out there. Oh, he lost his business. No, if you want to know about Alan, this is, this is the story. I told some of it on uh, Matt Bridger's uh, interview with me, which is, uh, was a great interview. Alan was driving an Uber. Yes. He sold half of his company and then he ended up selling all of his company and he was bored. He went out and drove an Uber up to the, I think it was 2018 and he did it just to talk to people and meet people. And a lot of people got in that cab and said, hey, you're Alan from the Louis Thurl Gambling in Las Vegas documentary. So that was really cool. Uh, he always loved that. But uh, besides that, you know, Alan, Alan's the kind of guy that needs to talk to people. So him being an Uber driver at one point in time was not far-fetched. He didn't need the money. He didn't do it for the money. He took a lot of long hauls because he wanted to talk to people. So that was really cool. Uh, besides that, um, right after that, he got into consulting for some guys that bought a mattress business. And I and just getting off the phone with him, I think a month and a half ago, he told me he's doing that, uh, consulting for these guys and helping them run it. And it's better because it gives them more free time. And his kids are in the trading card business and sports memorabilia business and doing very well. And he helps consult with them. So He's loving life, being able to spend it with his kids. So uh, I love hearing that. Not leaving Las Vegas. Steven, you're awesome, buddy. What's your take on the Las Vegas YouTube scene? What do you think YouTubers should do and not do for the city or recover best? Um, I'll tell you what. The YouTubers that are coming in that I've dealt with that are taking slots and doing slots right now, um, they're awesome. They're awesome. They're showing the slot machines. They're showing everybody. Wearing a mask, unfortunately, but we got to do it to stay open. Um, thank you for uh, for asking that. But I think YouTubers got to stay on a positive side of things. I think if, if you're going to go on and talk facts about Las Vegas, like you do, you have a lot of great facts and a lot of truth to your facts. I think you got to stay that way. I think you got to be positive for Vegas because the more negativity we put out there as living in Las Vegas it's like gospel. Everybody believes it. Everybody thinks, oh, that person said this, so this is what's happening. No. Vegas is great. It's always going to be Vegas. We have to wear masks and bars are closed. In, in the casinos, the bars are closed. Yes. We have two, uh, fortunately, that have tables that can be served at, but the bar is still closed. But our other bars outside and inside, the long bar has to close. And that's part of the mandate right now. And if we want to stay open, we have to follow that mandate. So it's better to be open and have a place to come to and, and still have fun because it's Vegas. Just wear a mask until this crazy stuff is over. But stay positive, YouTubers. If you live in Las Vegas, stay positive. I'm a casino executive of 25 years in this town. Don't be negative because no matter what, all the negativity you put out there is going to hurt our city and it's going to it's going to not want to bring people back when it's perfectly fine here, except that we're wearing a mask and being safe and clean. David, I know I'm seeing you next week, pal. Where can we find that doc? You know, the reason why I'm doing this, answering questions to the documentary, is because of the fact that it looks like the BBC didn't make it available to our country anymore. It's weird. They're either doing something, and I think it's being aired in the UK right now a lot. So... I think they took it off of YouTube for some reason, at least for the United States, because I had it in my playlist. And I think there's only one available right now from BBC Explorer. So that's why I wanted to do this so people can get up there. Um, if anybody has a link uh, to a Vimeo or somewhere that they can go and watch that, please put it in the, put it in the chat so people can watch that doc. Uh, it was a good documentary. I guess it's still popular 16 years later, and that's why we're talking about it. So see you this week, David. Have I ever sh slots? I love that. Have you ever witnessed somebody counting cards? How can you tell? Is that a real thing? So it is a real thing. You can keep track. Guys can keep track of a single deck, a double deck very well um, in the way of how many tens are left in the, in the deck and whether it's rich in tens. So you bet when you have a 16, you know you're going to get more tens in the deck. So you don't want to pull it. So your betting strategy becomes different. Yes, there's a lot of different ways. There's even programs you can put in 
surveillance can put in um, the way you're playing to see if you are counting cards. Cards. So it is a it is an issue. It's not you don't see it that often, and very few people do it these days. But there are guys that are great at doing it, and some famous celebrities that are famous at doing it. Let's just put it that way. Uh, not leaving Las Vegas. Tell the B VPN to make you look like you are in the UK. You should be able to watch unless it is behind a cable or satellite logo. That's that's awesome. See, I told you you got great facts. You know that you know how to find everything, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, Triple Ripple. Hi. Just thinking about running the security at Cosmo the other night. About running? That's yeah, thinking about you running. <laughs> That'd be funny seeing him running that. What's the wildest, silliest thing you've seen in the casino, Adrian? Wow, I've seen some crazy stuff. I've seen uh, two celebrities in the hard rock back in the day and in the bathroom. And the only reason why we knew they were in the bathroom because we found a trail of clothes leading to the bathroom. That's a, that's a true story. Um, silliest things I've seen in a casino. Wow, you see a lot, especially when people get drunk. You see a lot. We, uh, we had a celebrity one time from the High Limit Pit throw a $1,000 chip, a $1,000 chip into the crowd. And uh, it hit the railing, and bounced back into high limit pit. So it was pretty funny. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things I could tell you uh, that blow your mind. And we don't have enough time to do that. So, but that's a good. That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Uh, definitely going to stay in circa, Adam. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that super chat. I appreciate it, Stephen. You too. Yeah, circa is going to be good to go. We are. We are on track October 28th to open Circa Resort and Casino. That is going to be the place. Now, think about it. There hasn't been a hotel and casino built from the ground up since the, since the 70s in downtown Las Vegas. And this is going to be the tallest casino, biggest sports book, 135-foot screen outside by the six-tier pools. You know, it's going to be six. Stadium Swim is going to be the best pool to come to in Las Vegas. And I've ran some of the best pool parties and at rehab and, and help market that and brand it. I'm telling you, Stadium Swim is where it's going to be. And some of the best sports you're going to be seeing on that 135 foot screen too. So we uh, appreciate all of you. Come down and check it out. And when you get there, 2021, we'll be raring to go because we already have a, a preview of it on October 28th, starting, starting then. So We'll get used to it, and by the time you get here, we'll be pros at it. Thanks, Stephen, for giving that VPN. That's a great idea, pal. Thanks for the super chat, too. Let's see. What else we got? This is tough to do, guys. I don't know how you do these things. I mean, I always add a helper. <laughs> Hog and Two Cent were always helping me, so... <laughs> All right, Craig, how did the BBC contact? How did the uh, did the BBC contact you? You know, it um yeah. Uh let's see. Um, you know, I don't even remember. They came in and they came in. What did they do? I know I know Stuart, he was the, the producer for there, and he had called me about doing something in the way of a re, uh, the documentary and getting some players together. And I was skeptical at the time because big players don't like to be filmed. So what I ended up doing was um, I asked a couple like Alan, and I don't know if you remember on the, on the Twitter, you might see Bob Hawkinsmith, Robert Hawkinsmith. He was the guy at the craps table that had a stack of, of hundreds that he pulls out to play craps. Well, that's my tax guy. <laughs> that's my guy that keeps my taxes in line every year. He still does it out of Arizona and Las Vegas. Bob said to say hi to everybody. He was in the documentary and I asked him, Bob, you want to come play craps on TV? <laughs> he said, sure. And he came out and he, and he did it. Alan was the same way. Dan, the man, that was awesome. It was pretty funny that how some people confuse Dan, the man with Alan. They, I guess they kind of look similar, but some people thought that was Alan. So it was, that was kind of funny, but um, yeah, actually I'll tell you this. It was, what was interesting was Stuart during that time, Stuart and Louis, Louis wanted to film my wedding as part of it. And I thought, sure, if you want to do that. Well, what they did, and, and none of you probably know this, but they, instead of putting it on a documentary, as you saw, they gave me a 20-minute to 25-minute professionally produced 
wedding. And they took everything from the wedding and put it in there. And that was incredible. And it was something to this day, which is awesome. My kids can always watch because they were never there. Ashlyn, my daughter was only six months old. So, but Bill Goldberg, icon Bill Goldberg, the wrestler, he was there at my wedding party. It was, it was a lot of fun. So it was something that wasn't captured on a documentary, but thanks to them and doing this, it's something I had to remember the rest of my life, as well as this documentary. Mr. Uber, I, we got to meet, buddy. You and I got to meet, Mark. When is Circa going to give the Uber drivers a tour of the new garage? Where That's coming. That is coming, and they're going to have a party for you guys. So hang tight. We'll, we'll tweet it out there and get it going. Judy, thank you, Judy. You're awesome. Judy Wilson, thank you. So Tim Rees, I like that legendary documentary. I agree. I, it was. I'm blessed that I was able to do that. Um, can't wait to for time, Alan. Yes, I'm going to try to get with Alan when this opens up, um, and I get to go back to Toronto, to Canada. I'm going to go to dinner with him, or I'm going to sit down somewhere, and by then I'll be a pro at doing this live stuff with somebody, and I'll do an interview with Alan live, and we'll we'll answer questions or. And we'll talk to everybody. I'm, I can't wait for that. And I hope you guys you guys uh, can see that. Carl, uh, yes, Dan the Man. Yeah, Dan the Man had a baby, which was shocking because he used to be a party man. Um, but he had a baby. Uh, he was seriously settling down with somebody. I haven't seen Dan probably for maybe eight months to a year from now, since now. But uh, Dan's always been great. Dan's a, Dan's a good guy. Just haven't seen him in playing. Haven't. I haven't hosted him for about a year, year and a half. So not sure what's up with him lately. What else we got? Yeah, uh, Neon Vacation. We talked about Martha earlier. Uh, we don't know. She was she was older when we did the show. So not sure where she is now. Um, but I'll tell you what, she's got to be pretty old now. And we haven't been able to see her. I don't know any hosts that are taking care of her. So hopefully she's still alive and kicking and having a good time playing slots somewhere. But sorry, I don't know that. Uh, let's see. Hidden Jackpot. So just listen to the podcast from Jonathan Jossel with Derek. And it was great. Jonathan Jossel is doing a great job at the Plaza. He's a great guy. He gets it. Uh, having him part of downtown is great. And he's only going to get busier because once Circa opens up, that puts the Plaza on the map as well. So, uh, Jonathan, keep doing what you're doing. And him and Derek together on the podcast were awesome if you get a chance to listen to that. Stock cars. How are you, stock cars? Good to see you in here. I was watching the old TV series American Casino that you were in. No, that I wasn't. I was in the casino with Mark Burnett. The American Casino was shot at Green Valley. But uh, you just got the name because, yeah, Training Tommy was the casino. That's what we were called. Um, Marciano. Marciano in that. Yeah, you know, I love putting him in place because he thought he was getting it over on a young kid, but he didn't realize the guy that worked with him for so long that it was me that was really pulling the strings from behind the scenes. So thank you. Hey, Laurie, thanks for always being a big supporter, Laurie. I appreciate it. You're awesome. You're always a big supporter, answering everything, leaving comments. Really appreciate it. And I will keep bringing you Vegas footage. Thank you. Yes. Vegas Confessions podcast. I can't wait to do a podcast with you. I know you're heading back, uh, back into town. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk some uh, some big players and and everything. Uh, I know we're going to do that. So I can't wait. How do I handle when big players lose big in the casino? You know, it's tough. You got it's a balancing act. It's a, it's a real. It's it's. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew, you where'd you come from? That's amazing. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate the super chat. Um, great smile too and stash. <laughs> hey, so talking about that. Oh, you don't have a that looked like a mustache of that. Thanks for putting that up. Uh, Andrew, I appreciate that. I don't know what NLK means though. What does NLK mean? Somebody help me. Big players, when they lose, let me tell you this. It's a big deal because listen, let's say they come in and blow a half a million dollars or a million dollars. What do you say to them? Hey, get them next time. <laughs> you can't. You have to go with it. You have to get a feel for it and know what you're doing. I mean, at all times. And that's the scary part. If you say the wrong thing, they could be pissed off at you and never come back. So I just kind of go with the way they're feeling. If they're okay with it, you kind of joke with them if they're joking. 
and you just you, you make them feel better. But I'll tell you, the biggest compliments I get from my guys is even though I lost, I still had a great time and you still took care of me well. And when they can thank you after a loss, that's the biggest compliment you can get. So handling big players, you saw it in the documentary with Alan. Alan's attitude didn't change, so it was easy to deal with. You just don't be so talkative with them. You, you get their mind off of it. That's the best thing you can do. Chris, thank you very much for the super chat. Any rumors when bars and concerts are going to be back on Fremont? Let me tell you something. We tried, and we got shut down from the, the governor. Uh, did not want to put a concert up there to, or even put a band or a DJ because what happens is we put um, we end up putting a lot of a lot of um, people in front of that stage. Thousands end up coming out, so it's just crazy. So he won't let that happen. But we'll keep you posted. Watch Twitter and watch, and I'll put it out there when we do. Ricky Hines, thank you very much for the super chat. What happened with Westgate and EPE Estate? A, a shame given Elvis's history in the building was a sweet Allen State and where Elvis stayed. Okay, so Westgate's just changing up things, trying to be more modern. Those three villas. Up, up on top there, the one Allen stayed in was the middle villa. That was the biggest, had 15,000 square feet that had the horses. To the left of that, if you were staring at that suite, was the Elvis suite. And that had two floors to it, which a little balcony as well. Barry Manilow stays in that suite when he's performing there. And that's his suite. Still had Elvis's white piano in there because at one point in time, I put Allen in that suite just to put him in there, but he didn't like it because it was... Uh, it, it just wasn't his style and he had more fun in the other one. But um, that, that was awesome because I put my daughter on that piano as, as if she was playing, I got a picture of it. It's awesome. So uh, that was Elvis's suite. That's right beside Alan's suite. Uh, we never got a chance to show it though. So that's, that was a shame. Elvis's memory though still lives like on and on in that place. It's awesome. Kenneth, thank you very much, pal, for the super chat. Any timeline line for shows coming back to Vegas now. <laughs> they're 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 hurting they're all hurting people are still performing and trying to stay up on everything but it's it's tough because there's no way they're gonna pack anybody in a theater right now hi <laughs> dad oh hi ashlyn i know you're on madison thank you good to see you babe when are you coming home to me i mean you're, you slept overnight last night at madison's and now you're still there i haven't seen you since i got back Anyways, uh, yeah, so shows are not likely happening anytime soon. So sorry about that, but we'll keep you posted. Ron Triple Stars, see you in a few hours. Yes, I got to get your limo set up to get you down to the D. Thank you, Ron. You're very nice. That's a very nice super chat. You know you don't have to do that. Have you, uh, and last, I know you're waiting for this, this broadcast. Have you got any big ideas for the sequel of Louie? I guess Vegas has changed a lot since the first documentary. Absolutely. I think. Louis could get so much material. I said this in, in the very beginning. We are, we are definitely uh, a spot to show off everything. I mean, think about it. Largest sports book in the world, Circus Sports. Three stories. That's a story in itself. The pool, stadium swim, with a 135-foot screen and six pools tiered up with cabanas surrounding it and gaming outside. Open 365 days a year. I mean, that's going to be crazy. So that's that, you don't hear that anywhere with a pool. So we can get some great stuff out there. I'm trying to talk Pawn Stars even to come and put Chumley on that big screen, maybe sitting by the pool. I, I'm trying to. Um, and then you got the restaurant. You have Barry's Downtown Prime. This guy came from the old days of um, Nine Steakhouse at the Palms. I mean, he knows everybody between the celebrities. He knows, and I know, I say within six months, Barry's Downtown Prime will be a celebrity hotspot and one of the hottest places in Las Vegas. And Louie could be sitting there videotaping and taping all this stuff, filming all this stuff. I mean, and then we bring in players on top of that. I mean, you've got you've got other restaurants in there that we can we can shoot in. I mean, there is so much we can do on that property. And the biggest thing is brand new. Nobody has seen it. Nobody on TV, nobody anywhere except what we let out. So whatever footage we let out is what you get to see. So imagine if Louis came there and did a documentary, you'd see it all. And you know what to expect because it's going to be a destination stop when you come into Vegas. You are going to want to come and see us there. 
Okay, Ashlyn, thank you for letting me know you're staying another night at Maddie's. I'm glad you can tell me that on a on a live and let your father know where you're staying. Thank you. <laughs> I knew already. Can we have more documentary questions? Yes, send, send me the doc questions. I know you guys want have a lot of questions about that. Send me that. And Oh, thanks, Hagen, two cent. That's awesome. You guys always know where the links are. Kino Kid, class gentleman, generous, humble, keep it up. Hey, Kino Kid, thank you for that super chat, but I'm waiting to see your Kino videos because I know you play great Kino and I want to see those videos, so get them going. Jenny, hi, Jenny. Did poor John Romali ever win his money back? You know what? Not that time. Not, not that night. I didn't see him win anything. You saw his attitude, too. He was pretty mad that he was losing. I remember him getting up from the table and walking and, and trying to go to another table. And a lot of gamblers do that. They walk from one table to another to try to change their luck. You just got to hold out on those the bad cards. Bet smaller until you hit it. I was trying to show Hog and Tusa. Hog, Hog was playing. I was trying to get him to do some money management and hold out those bad cards. But <laughs> he had a different strategy. But I swear, Hog, it worked. It worked for part of it. Jason R., how long was production? A week in, a few days, or what? No, we, Jason, we, we went on for uh, – I think it was three weeks. I think it was around three weeks that we did all that. Um, and I had to make sure everybody was in during that time. And, and then I even got married during that time. It was crazy for me. It was hectic. And it's funny. Okay. I got to tell you all this about the documentary because you're going to think I have no clothes because <laughs> that I wear the same stuff. What I wore in the very beginning to go get Alan. And then they show me later on that I'm wearing that same stuff. Trust me. It was all in the same time frame. It was like almost 24 hours. I couldn't get out of my shirt. I couldn't change because Alan, as soon as he got in there, he loved to go right to the tables and gamble. And you saw the way he fed those slot machines. And a lot of times I sat with Alan or I'd hang with Alan because we're friends. So we would talk and hang out and catch up. So just know I do have changes of clothes that I didn't wear the same Tommy Bahama shirt the whole time. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Adam, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I appreciate the super chat. Great knowledge of Las Vegas. Looking forward to getting there. 2021. Listen, we got to get everybody from Europe over here. I mean, I hate that the UK and the Canadian borders are closed right now. It just sucks because that's a lot of our business to Vegas. And that that's that sucks. You know, so hopefully all of you can travel soon. Stay safe until then. And when you can get back here, come see me and say hi. At Circa, if it's in 2021 or before October 28th, come to the D and say hi. The nuke won. There was a rumor that Dan the Man was an actor. Any truth? Listen, you can't. I'm going to tell you this, okay? Any rumors of anybody being an actor is not true, okay? Everybody was natural. They were real. They were genuine. And they were my gamblers. They were my players that agreed to come on camera. And you can't. Put real money across the table and fake it and give it back to them on camera. You can't do that. You can't do it on camera and then give it back to them off cam. There are certain rules about filming gaming tables, and you have to be careful about that. That's why you see a lot of times on films that you see fake chips, um, and that's and that's because they're poker chips and they they aren't gambling with real money. We they gambled with real money. Alan gambled with real money. Dan the Man, Bob Hawkinsmith. Johnny, them got they all, Martha, if, 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 if he was an actor, then Martha was an actor, actress, but she wasn't. You saw the money being fed into machines. What are we going to do? Open up the machine and give it back to them? We're going to go across the Baccarat table if Dan Man lost and give it back to him? No. They gambled with real money. So no actors. It was real. Uh, they were, and they agreed to, to film with us. So thank you. Kay, thank you for the question. It's a document. What was your favorite moment that didn't make the cut? My favorite moment that didn't make the cut, um, you know, I kind of wish you all would have saw the, the my wedding party. The, I mean, the, the reception. It, it was really cool. I mean, I'll tell you one part where you're supposed to dance with your wife. I, I, I was dancing and 20 seconds in, I grabbed my daughter from my mother and, and had my six-month-old daughter in there uh, dancing with us. And, and before it was done... Um, Bill Goldberg swooped in with the whole wedding party and he kissed her on the forehead. And she, he's like an uncle Bill to my kids. And this famous wrestling icon 
was one of the best moments of the wedding because the way he kissed her forehead was so touching. Nobody caught that except the BBC. And it was a, a moment that I'll always cherish. And I wish I could have shared it with the world and, and let you guys see it. You would have loved it. <laughs> Alan, listen, Alan loves the gamble. He doesn't go see shows when he's here. Um, he, he loves the gamble and we go and eat. We have a nice meal. We take our time. He doesn't like, let's hurry up to go gamble. He's not like that. He wasn't an addict. Um, not at all. So he, uh, he would gamble, hang out in the room. We'd watch movies late at night too. That was cool. Uh, so no, Al Alan would just gamble and have fun and hang out. It was like two buddies hanging out. Matt Wilson, thanks for being a big supporter, buddy. Thanks for the super chat. Do you miss working on a strip? You know, I thought I would. I really did. When I came back downtown, I was skeptical. Then I met Derek Stevens. And, and when I realized, that, you know, I always worked for a CEO or an owner. I've always done that. Uh, and working for Derek over the years, I've been there almost eight years. Eight years will be January. So um, it's pretty incredible to work for somebody like this that gets it and gets what you do. I don't miss the strip. And I'll tell you what, the best customer service and the best fun you can get. And I'm not, I'm not bashing the strip. The strip has its amenities. But if you want to have a good time and not be feel like you're stuffy and it's it's stuck up a little bit or or people don't care about what you play, come downtown. And that's not just the D, that's just Fremont Street in general. You know, out of 44 million people, I've said it before, 44 million people come to town, over 22 million a year come downtown. And Steven from not leaving Las Vegas, he's got that fact, so he can back me up on that one. But there's a reason for that. When the bands are out there, there's live music on Fremont Street. In our casino, we have dancing dealers. We have flair bartenders. They're always entertaining, so it's a lot of fun. So you need that. When you win, a, when you win and you get a blackjack, you can high five the, the dancing dealer. They don't mind, they don't care. It's a good time. Look at, I let YouTubers in to videotape their slot machine play. What other places do that? Cosmo, yeah. I started it. I was the first one to start it with Brian Christopher three and a half to four years ago, and everybody caught on to it. Jonathan Jostle's great at it too. Listen, I love Jonathan. He's he's doing the right thing by letting people in to do it. They, he even lets you, uh, I know Hagen Two Cent did blackjack there. So that was a big deal. So uh, yeah, come downtown. Best customer service, a lot of fun, and we'll show you the best time. And you can film your slots as long as you get permission from socialatthed.com, which is our social media team. Neon Vacation, was Louis aloof as he was putting as he was putting on, or was he suit? No, I'll tell you what, that was genuine Louis. If you if you knew Louis, if you met Louis Thoreau, I'll tell you what, he he he's not an emotional guy. You see him in all his documents. This guy's a professional. He made me nervous because I was trying to get a rise out of him. I was trying to change the way he thought. But he's so knowledgeable on things from all the documentaries he's done. And the questions he has are amazing because he draws it out of you. He's so good at doing that. So the best part was when he's trying to get trying to get out of Alan and him and, and him and Alan are going back how much he lost. And he couldn't do it. But Louis' expression didn't change once. But then when we got him on the table with Dan the man and he won some money, you saw Louis's personality change to being happy, smiling, was in shock that he won so much money in such a short period of time. You saw us at the cage, Louis and I, and I said to him, where do you make that kind of money in this short of period of time? You don't. I said, be happy. This is, you, you doubled your money. You made more. And you saw a different side of Louis. And I'm glad we brought that out because you got to see a real a real Louie if he wasn't even on camera, which was which was really cool because that's that's how he was all the time. But I love Louie. I mean, I can't wait. I, I really hope we can do something again. Cinnamon Girl, thank you for the super chat. Thank you, Richard, for being so nice to us YouTubers. I know the D is so lucky for you. You keep doing your polls there, your slot polls there, and you're, you're doing well. Listen, I'm happy because that's that's what we want. We want all that happening. We want you guys to come down and have a good time. You win, I see you more. And what's the best marketing you can do in a place besides having winners, right? If you have, the more winners you have is the best marketing you can have, especially in slots. And I've heard a lot of our people winning, a lot of hand pays. Check out my last, my last uh, slot 
video with Slotcracker. You'll see Ron and Brooke were with him. They're always with uh, with Slotcracker. She had two hand pays, and it was awesome. And it was right there captured on video. And, and it's awesome. They're back this weekend. And I know they won on that lightning machine again this weekend that you'll see in a video. Matt, what's up, buddy? Hey, everybody, say hi to Matt Bridger. If you don't know Matt Bridger, let me tell you something. This guy saw me on the documentary, wanted to come in a bit when he came into Vegas to interview me. Um, and because of Matt, I am on YouTube talking to you because he told me a lot of people wanted to hear about this, wanted to talk about the documentary that I had some fans around the world. I see them when they come in and want to take pictures, but I never believed it. Matt told me to get on. And after our third live, I think, or our, our Q and a and two interviews later, I got on YouTube and thanks to all of you. I mean, 3000 subscribers and less than two months and all the video views you give me, I appreciate it. And I'm just going to keep giving you Vegas content. And I have a lot more coming up. I have some how to's. I have some ways to save you money. I've got some stuff coming up that you'll, you'll love. Um, any chance of Louis directing wedding video, making it to YouTube. Yeah. I don't know about that. I, I, maybe, maybe a part of it. I'm not sure yet that it's kind of personal and I, I've got to respect that. So it's something they gave me. Uh, I'm a big guy and I'm respect and you know that Matt about me, but, uh, I don't know. I, I, it's on DVD. I'd have to get it switched over anyway. So not sure, but thanks, Matt. CH Copeland 388. Thank you for the super chat. You know, you don't have to do that. I appreciate it. I, I get to see your questions a lot easier. So thank you. What's the biggest challenging challenge competing against the big corporate casinos? I'll tell you what, um, they have more amenities a lot of times. I mean, come on, when you're when you have 3,000 rooms, 5,000 rooms, I mean, you have a lot of amenities that you can you can give more to your customers. I mean, we do pretty well. We do pretty well downtown giving back free play and promo chips and 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 match plays. We do we do pretty well doing that. Just that when you're dealing with 3,000 people opposed to maybe 635 rooms, I mean, there's a lot more you can do with that, but um, you know, the I think they have a big challenge. I think the bigger casinos have a bigger challenge than we do because they have to keep customer service on point, and it's hard to do with that many employees in that big of a property. Where us as a smaller property downtown, even Circa, Circa is going to be the tallest building in Las Vegas, but the way it's going to be put together and the way it is. The customer service is not going to suffer from it. You know, we're still going to have, well, we have seven, 777 rooms and we're opening with 530 odd rooms. But that's smart of Derek Stevens to do because he's going to see what the demand is for the rest of the rooms and whether we need more suites or more double beds or more kings. You know, that's the way Derek does things. He does it differently than anybody else. And that's what makes him great at what he does at being an owner in Las Vegas. So customer service, I think, is a big problem that they have a challenge. They have that challenge more than we do. Mark M, thanks, buddy. Thanks for that super chat. Are you, you are a true pro professional. Can't wait to come to D. Some I I hope you come to the D and let me shake your hand for for even saying that. That's you don't know me and you just know me by what you see. This is me, guys. I don't change. And people that know me in this chat can tell you that. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. What else we got? Stephen Lowe waited an hour to check in at the Excalibur at midnight. Service is trash on the strip. It's unfortunate. You know, remember something. It's not the way the big guys want it to be. They have, you might run into a lazy employee. You might run into somebody that doesn't care about their job, unfortunately. And it's sad during these times because there's a lot of people that need a job. But, you know, customer service is tough and those big places have a hard time. Think about managers, directors, think about the vice presidents. They can only rely on how good their, their directors and managers are, and they got to rely on their staff. So they may not see that going on. I would let them know that you had such a terrible time. I mean, and, and see what they can do for you. I know if you gamble, definitely get a casino host. They can ex expedite things quicker than anybody on the property if you gamble. Ronnie, what kind of play do I do I need to get a host at the D? Well, Ronnie, you know, downtown, it's a lot less. I mean, you can get a host at any given time. I'll tell you that, okay? If you're a $50 player or above in a way of average on a, on a table, 
on a table game and you bring a couple thousand dollars to play with, get a host. If you're on a slot machine and you're putting 500 to a thousand dollars in a machine, get a host. I don't care what kind of money you put into a machine or on a table, go to VIP services because they will help you, but always get a player's card. Ronnie, make sure everybody gets a player's card. Everybody out there, you go to a casino, get a player's card because you never know what you're going to gamble. And one night you may lose some money or win some money. And a host might want to invite you back and get you get you in again. And they might offer you the world. So please get a host and get a player's card. Creeper Nick. <laughs> that, uh, that is a scary picture. I Always when it pops up, I have to look twice, Nick. Thanks for the super chat, buddy. Uh, thanks for the hospitality earlier this month, Rich. Can't wait to come back to the circuit. Listen, I can't wait to have you back. Circuit's going to be a blast. You thought we had a good time when you were in. We're going to have even a better time. So let's uh, get to Circa. October 28th, that's when we're opening. This place is going to be off the charts. Never met you, Richard, but I said via email, you're a genuine guy with great content. Can you save a book for me? Jason, I will save a book for you. Absolutely. Thank you for that super chat. I've got only so many left, but I'm working with somebody right now, a publisher, Huntington Press. I'm working with uh, Anthony over there, the owner. I'm going to see if I can do an ebook as well. So if I can get that done, I'll have more books and, and I can get it out there and just get them to everybody and sign them for you if you want. Okay. So when you come in and see me at the D, ask me if I have a book. I might have one in my office and I'll get it for you. No problem whatsoever. Oh, Jack Richardson. That's interesting. Going for an interview for a casino host in the UK next week. Any tips? Okay, Jack, customer service. You're all about customer service. You're all about helping people. You uh, just know, know what you're doing in the way of what what a casino i don't know if you've been a casino host before but know what it is involved with being a casino host before you walk in there okay because that's the key make sure you network with everybody if one of the biggest things i can tell you i don't care if you're in business and what you do out there in business biggest advice i can give you network 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 get a business card with your cell phone on it remember who cares? You can block any telemarketer. You can block anybody on your cell phone these days. Get a, get a business card with your cell phone and email on it and social media if you got it. Because what's going to happen is you never know when that person might need you. In whatever business you're in or what kind of business they have, you never know what you may need. So it all works that way. And networking is where, what's gotten me to where I am today. How do you think I take care of all these big celebrities and athletes and stuff like that? It's because I reach out if I don't know them and I find some common denominator between us that makes them more comfortable with me that I'm not, not just a fan. Always find a common denominator with who you're meeting before you go up and talk to them and then give them your card. That is something that will get you farther in any job you do or any job you're trying to do. And, and like I said, stick to the customer service aspects and that you have access to bringing people in. Okay. Those are two things that you want to definitely tell whoever's interviewing you. And at the same time, work with other hosts and, and, and you become a connection for me at whatever casino you're at, you could become a connection for me to send my players that live around there to you because we know each other, you know, that's how you work. That's networking for you. Why are paybacks? I just saw that. Yeah, I just saw that paybacks. Um, hi, Claudia, the Italian slot chick. Nice to see you on. I know you're waiting to be on here. So thanks for being on here. Um, Ronnie, you're back. Thanks, buddy. Big supporter. I appreciate you, pal. I signed up online. We'll be at the D this Saturday for the first time. I'm interested in moving my play to the D. I love hearing that, Ronnie. And we're, and we're going to make sure. I'll be there Saturday night. Make sure you pick up a house phone. Get them to call me. Go into VIP, get them to call me there. I want to come see you, shake your hand. Get me your player's card. I'll take. I'll keep it under file, and let's see how you do and see what I can copy. You. Will you ban Hung and Two Set if they actually win at the site that blackjack game? <laughs> no. <laughs> Would I ban? Listen, Hung and Two Cent were there filming me and Matt Bridger back <laughs> in that first interview, and they were right there with us. So though Matt Bridger and Hung and Two Cent, they, they, I'm loyal to them no matter what because they are awesome hog and two cent 
help me. Hog actually got, got me on this live stream today because he's usually helping me host and he had to get me on because I tried that YouTube studio and I tried to get on through YouTube studio and I don't know what happened. So sorry, sorry again about that. Screwed up in the beginning, but hope you all forgive me. I am an amateur. I will get better. So Hog and Two Cent are always there to help me and so is Matt Bridger. So thank you. I said it. Say hi to Matthew. Yeah, you need to get back to Vegas, pal. Absolutely. Nice, uh, nice to see you in the chat. Thank you, James. Hi, Richard. Do you think you will be able to do a walkthrough video of circa? Ha ha. I have one. <laughs> I have a walkthrough uh, from about a month and a half ago. I'm putting it together. I got to show my owner before I release it. But yes, I do have that, and I will be putting it out definitely, and you'll be able to see it. Thank you, Claudia, for forgiving me. I really appreciate that. I hope everybody does. Uh, what else we got? Working with you, Richard Greenberg. Thank you. I, you know, it is great exposure for a casino. As long as the people on, uh, abide by the rules that shoot their YouTube videos in our place, as long as they do that, yes, I'm, I'm all for it. And as long as they, they do that, I'll, I'll let them film any time. Um, Vegas Confessions Park. Thank you for the time. I mean, thanks for coming out of your way to meet me. I know I was finishing dinner with some important people and you waited around. I appreciate that. And it was great to meet you. Uh, I can't wait to do your podcast. Yes, uh, Nuke One, we do still have the Derby game on the second floor. Um, yes, that's our only coin mach operator machine. And now that coins, so get this. If you got coins out there and you come into Vegas, bring them to our cage <laughs> and we'll do something. <laughs> we'll, we'll cash them in for you. Because, you know, coins being during this pandemic, money and coins, everybody's, everybody does want to use them. It's crazy. So we'll take extra coins all day long at the D Casino. So just so you can play the Sigma Derby machine. Absolutely. It's on the second floor. It's in the middle. Second floor at the D is beautiful. If you haven't seen it yet, re-renovated. How, how does an owner like Derek Stevens, build an almost billion dollar casino in the middle of it, renovates his second floor at the D. He's only concern is about customers and how they feel and how, how the experience is at his properties. He changed that whole floor during this time, made Bar Canada and Circus Sports back in the corner, which is an awesome place to hang out when the bar is open, of course. But there are seats, there are tables up there. You can still go and have a good drink and some Canadian drinks too. So slots, uh, what are your rules for filming? My rules for film, our, our rules for filming is you got to send in your, your driver's license or if you have a player's card with us already, we just got to bet you to make sure you're, you're, you're safe for our brand that you're not putting lewd stuff out on video or anything like that. And then during the pandemic, we ask you to only film your slot playing. No walking around, film, filming crowds, walking through the casino. I've seen some slot YouTubers I got to reach out to that did it without permission. Um, we do not allow you walking through the casino showing everything. We just had an issue with that. Uh, I, I got to share this with you because it, it, it really bothered me that people think casinos are a public space. It is not. It's really private property and it's a gaming establishment. People deserve their privacy in a gaming establishment when they come to vegas you don't know who people are with and it, maybe people don't want to be on camera but we had two couples walk through the casino filming our casino the tables the dealers the people playing and i very nicely came up behind and said sorry ma'am you can't film you can't film in here yes i can we can do whatever we want and our, our boyfriend or whoever it was chimed in we can do whatever we want. this is a public space and i said no you can't oh who are you I said, listen, I'm one of the directors here. You can't do that. I'm talking like this. And they still insisted that they could film that. They lived here all their life and they could film. And I said, well, then you don't know the rules of a casino. And you can't just film in a casino without getting permission. And for them to do that and say that, they wanted my name. They tried to go above my head. But it was ridiculous. And I, I don't like that. I don't like when people just assume they can do anything they want especially in a, on private property. So just had to get that off my chest because they're pretty rude in the way they did it. So Ace, one more documentary question. Yeah, please. I noticed most of the high rollers you guys filmed were largely card players. Is that consistent with real life? So what's interesting about Vegas, you usually find more slot machines, of course, than tables in a, in a, 
in a casino anywhere. Hard rock back in the day was crazy because we would take slot machines off the floor and put more tables in because it was more table players. Now you, you, you never will hear that again. You'll hear more slot machines. Of course you'll have, I think we have over a thousand in the D um, and we don't have, what, what, what do we have? 40 tables, 50 tables, 30 tables in the, in the D. I don't even know anymore, but uh, no slot, slot players. There are tons of slot players and slot players really do a lot for Las Vegas. I mean, that's what keeps these lights on on the strip. And you know, you can see you're, you're playing against odds of a slot machine and you have a little bit more of an edge when you play blackjack because of the odds. Of course, you have a little bit of skill that's involved. What, what cards you pull, it's a little different, but um, no slot, slot, slot players are just handled differently in the way of uh, their host because it's a different metric when it's, it's figured out how much comps you get and things like that. Um, blackjack, any table game players, um, they're seen differently. Listen, you'll get a lot of free play on slot for slot machine players. You won't get free play as table games. You'll gain casino points or dollars. Um, you won't get that as a table player. You'll get comps and we'll work off your loss. But so there are some differences and some advantages and disadvantages of both, but they're definitely a lot more slot players and table players. <laughs> in jackpots was bar canada your idea no that was actually derek's idea there's only three or four of us canadians that work for derek and we're kind of we're proud of it because it makes us different but we're proud of bar canada and we love it brian christopher was just in we did a video there and he was just back in he had to get his uh crown maple drinks from there which are canadian drinks it's always pretty cool stewie do you have any way for customers to deposit cash in the uk and then use it for credit at the tables so you know, that's a good question because anybody can put front money up, but I'll have to look in. Do me a favor, put that same question in the comments below when this is done and I will get back to you and I'll, I'll let you know about front money from, from the UK or Europe. But I know everybody can wire in a cashier's check, we clear it, and then it's here for you when you come so you don't have to carry all that cash. You can also set up for credit, but credit's very touchy when it's outside of the United States. So we're very careful that way. Um, but yeah, please put that question down below. I definitely will get back to you and, and give you a straight answer on that. Stylist, <laughs> my stylish hair. I am off, Claudia. This is just my messy look today. <laughs> Jack Richardson, document. Yeah, the two arrogant salesmen. Are they your players, or do they know what happened to them? Is are you talking about John and the other guy, the two the two blackjack players? Is that is that? um who you're thinking um they weren't my players if you're talking about those two guys louie and i were actually walking we were finishing up for the night and uh <laughs> and thanks for the comment on the air louie louie and i were walking past the table and he saw these two guys playing and their emotions were getting high on the table because it wasn't going so good so he he wanted to get in there and i'm like louie i don't know them so I went up to the guys and I said, guys, you want to film? Do you, do you mind getting on camera? And I told him a little bit about what, what it was. So you see me in a, that part of the video sticking close to Louie. I think he gets a blackjack and I high five him. But I stayed close to him because I didn't know the guys. I didn't know how they react. So we were very careful there. But no, I, they weren't my players. I didn't know them. And uh, you saw how hot he got when he, he was losing, moving table to table. So. I, I think somebody found him on, on Facebook and he's fine and he's living his life. And, uh, but I didn't really know those guys except that night. Terry, if a person could only play one game to get the best comps, what would it be? Roulette. <laughs> if you're a table player and you can afford it, roulette. Roulette, it builds, it's, it, it, the odds are so much in the casino's favor on roulette because you have so many numbers and, and betting strategies. And if, if, if you put a lot of time in on a roulette table, your theoretical, which we, we use to comp off of, is a lot higher than any other table game out there. If I could get a bunch of roulette players in as a host, it's amazing because it builds, <clears throat> it builds up so much comp for players, you can, you can help them with anything quicker. 
So roulette, if if you want to get more cost, but then again, you got to take a chance and hope your lumber, numbers are lucky. Chris, thank you very much for that super chat. I love that. I, is that your daughter wearing a Mickey shirt? That's cool. I love that. That since I have a host at the D, are you extending our comps during this pandemic, or do we lose them after? No. Listen, if you have a host, your host knows how you play, and and that host will extend your comps. Listen, you should be getting your offers in the mail still. We are doing offer. The offer is still coming in the mail. You can still use those offers. Um, no, it's great. Whatever we can do to help, um, by all means, the, the hosts are great. I love all our hosts. Our hosts are good. They know the business and they take care of customers. Great. So just hit your host up and they'll help. They'll help you. What's happening with Louie? Is he coming back? We kill for a part two. So Kathy, you might not have saw the beginning. I'll repeat it again. Thanks for the question. Um, we were, we we're in talks. We're, we're just, he's getting a feel. He's getting, a, it's been 16 years. He hasn't, he's, hasn't been to Vegas to do anything. So he's getting a feel for things. I let him know about Circa. We, we actually talked this last Tuesday. It was great to catch up with him for an hour on the phone. Um, we text back and forth. We're working on stuff and we're, we're trying to see what we could do together. Trust me. I would love a part two. Or I would love at least a return to Las Vegas for Louie for us to show off Louie in Las Vegas 16 years later. And I love to be a part of that with them, try to get Derek Stevens, an owner of a casino in that. I think it would be awesome. And we'd have a lot to show you. So cross your fingers. And Louie, we need a part two or we need you back in Vegas, pal. When do you when you consider comps on craps, do you include the odds on the pass line bet as an average? So our place is 10 times odds. So what they do, they include everything as an average. And But what that means then, part of your theoretical gets messed up because there's a lot more odds in that. So your comps um, might not be as much because you're, you're putting everything out there and we're counting everything. Usually when you have side bets, you have uh, things like that, you're not always doing them at the same time. So your average bet fluctuates a lot. So we do count it. Um, get with a host because we could definitely watch your play and comp you accordingly. But we will count everything. I believe we're still doing it at the D as your average in into your, your gaming. So not sure what we're doing for Circa yet, but we do have three to two blackjack at, at the D, which I know I saw a lot of you complaining about not having that on the strip. So that's a beautiful thing down uh, at, at the D. So Jason R, we want to part two with YouTubers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, now that we got the YouTubers are such a big deal now for Vegas. I will get some YouTubers into this documentary. I love to get Matt Bridger because he's from the UK. So I think Louie would get a good kick out of the vlog father. One of the first vloggers is not the first out of the UK with Matt Bridger. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of good people we can get on there. I would love to put the YouTubers on the documentary. And I think he was fascinated by that because I did tell him about that. Ace, you can ask whatever you like, pal. Lewis was really concerned about the host recognizing gambling addiction. Do you have a protocol if you have an addicted client? Listen, I think you saw me very rare uh, on there as a host on the documentary because you saw me tell, <laughs> hey, if it's not working out, let's go to dinner. You saw that in the casino when I did the casino reality show. If Alan wasn't having a good time, if he was losing, 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 I'd say, take a break. Let's go for dinner. It didn't change anything. And casino, some casino executives, what are you doing? Taking them off the table. Listen, the whole object of a marketing guy, which is a casino host guy, is to bring your customers back to the casino as much as you can. Okay. So when I was with Alan, he's a perfect example. He's got to keep coming back. But if I don't show him a good time or show that I care, then why would you come back to me? I wouldn't want to come back to a host that doesn't care about you. If you're just another number to a host, change hosts. I'll tell you that right now. If you're just another number, if you can't get a hold of your host personally and you think you play enough, then that's wrong. Your host should be able to take care of you. And listen, what made me successful is being 24 seven on my cell phone. So you could text me at any given time. Now, <laughs> I'm busier than ever. Everybody hits me up on social media and everywhere. I have a hard time getting back to everybody right away. But if, if, if I don't, they, they hit me up again and I got them. I don't miss it. So that's a big deal. Um, I care about my customers. So when they lose, it, it's tough to see, but I know they're, they're, they can afford it. 
and they're not playing with their last paycheck. So the paycheck they just got last week and a pay, they're moving paycheck to paycheck. No. So um, the, the gambling addiction, it's very rare that you see it, but you do see it. You try to help people. You try to, we do have the, the gamblers anonymous hotline, you know, at all uh, at the cage, you can pick up a pamphlet. We have pamphlets and cards you could give up to customers. If you feel something's wrong, you know, it's, it's a responsibility you have to, you have to balance because you don't know what anybody's real wealth is like or what kind of status they are at home. You don't really know that. People could come here and live the life. You know, we used to joke around about this in Vegas. People would come to Vegas, the people would live here. And Stephen, from not living in Las Vegas, you might be able to chime in on this, but some people would come here and they would make okay money. But they would get a little townhouse, so they'd get a little apartment, but they would buy a Corvette and they would go out and spend on their credit card and get the boost for $5,000 boost or cabanas by the pool. And they would, at the end of the year, their credit card would be huge and they'd never be able to pay that back. But they lived a lifestyle beyond what they, beyond what anybody would know because they would go back to their little apartment with not too much furniture and stuff like that. But what we would see is, wow, this guy's coming in. He's spending five thousand for cabana. He's getting a uh, uh, a booth at the club. He's spending five grand on a table or ten grand on a table. Wow, this guy's an awesome player. How do we know who that person is when they leave us in a way of how much money or what kind of life they live? We don't. That's not up us up, up to us to judge as a host. So when you saw it on the documentary, you saw three different players of mine. Right. You saw Allen, which was uh, uh, a whale. You saw Bob Hawkinsmith, which was comes in and, and just likes to play craps at his leisure. And he puts a few thousand dollars across the table just for fun. Dan, the man came in the same way. He he's a little bit higher than Bob as a player, you know, but lower than Allen. And he came in and played accordingly. So you saw the different levels of play. How do I know if well, I know Bob? But if Bob, if I didn't, wasn't so close to Bob, how do I know Bob's not actually wealthier than Alan? You know, so I don't know those things. So I have to treat everybody similar. But if you're playing bigger, of course, you're going to get more comps. So that's how you get treated differently. But you just get treated better in a way of getting more free stuff, but not by attitude or personality. So uh, if you do have a gambling addiction, I put it up at the bottom of a lot of my videos. Call the 1-800 number and stop gambling and stop going around casinos and playing lotteries. That's for sure. Hi, Kim. How much do you need to gamble to be classed, classed as a high roller? You know, that's tough to say because if you go to a property like Wynn uh, in a Venetian, you need $100,000 to even be considered a, a, a above average roller. I mean, that and, that and that's okay because that's what they're used to catering to. So that's okay. And you just got to know the places that you're going. I used to joke around and say, I used to steal $25,000 players all day long out of the Bellagio over to the Hard Rock because they always used to joke around with me and say, I blew $25,000 of Bellagio and couldn't get a room comp. So I said, $25,000, you'd be, a, you'd be a, a, a great player over here. You, you know, you'd be a, a big fish in a little pond, I used to say. Where over there, you're a, you're a small fish in a big pond, right? And, that, and that's the difference. So if you came down to the D, let's say, even a $5,000 to $10,000 player is a respectable player in a way of not being a high roller, but being a good player in a way of getting your, your trip taken care of, your rooms, your, your food, things like that, maybe even a suite. Absolutely. But you got to. it just depends on what property you go to. If you go to the, the properties that are high-end properties, they're going to expect more from you to be a high roller. At the, at, the, at the Hilton, Alan was one of their biggest high rollers that they had. So, And then we had a lot of Latin guys that came in from South America that were big too. Kevin, how are you, Kevin? Hi, Richard. Have you ever felt me and a casino host you were taken advantage of by a player? Wow, that's tough. Um. Yeah, there's there's some players, you know. I like to say some players uh, out there reflect their host. Uh, I take care of a lot of a lot of guys and a lot of women, and they're good. They're good people, and and they reflect me and my personality, and we get along great. And that's how I'm able to deal with them. 
there's some guys that I'll take care of it for a second time. And they just, they're hard to deal with. They're hard to deal with. They treat people bad. And, and that's not even when they're losing. They're just demanding, demanding, demanding. And I'll, listen, I'll give you whatever you deserve. But if I can't, they'll try to, they'll try to weasel it out of you. I mean, they'll try to get more than what they expect. And there are people out there. But I stand my ground. I don't care. You don't treat our staff bad. You don't treat uh, anybody around us that works for us bad. You can try. Listen, it's your hard work and money. Try to get as many comps as you can from a host. Absolutely. Don't try to go around them after a host already said no, because that's not going to help because we all talk to each other. But at the same time, yeah, there's guys that there's there's host, there's customers out there that um, are tough to deal with. And I'll, I'll admit it, 25 years of being in this business, very tough to deal with. So, um, yeah, I, I've had my share. Lad and last, thanks for watching again. I, I love your support, guys. Do you find a lot of big players are now gambling downtown? You know, I find um, I find a lot of movement from the strip to downtown. And I find a lot of people are stopping. Like, like look at Slotcracker and Ron and Brooke. They stay at the Cosmo. Not that I can't put them up here, but I say, look, stay at your nice place. You love the wraparound suite. You love the things that you have over there. No problem. Stay there. I have no problem with that. Come down and get, come down and see me. And they're good players. They're good slot players. So I could send a limo to get you. Stay wherever you want, but come down and visit the D and I'll, I, and I can still take care of you. So it doesn't matter what your play is. Dropping in is great. If you're a big player, this is what happens. You may have a half a million dollars over at the win, but you want to come and eat it on Yama, which is the best Italian steakhouse in town. Check it out on TripAdvisor. You'll see I'm not lying. But at the same time, they'll come down and eat and want to play a little bit. So you know what they'll do? They'll bring $50,000. That guy's a big player elsewhere, and he's only bringing $50,000 down to us. I say only because normally in the place that he plays, $50,000 isn't that big, right? For us, it's a big player. You know, $50,000, $100,000 guy is a big player downtown. So uh, we see a lot of movement, but you just don't see – the people bringing a half a million dollars or a million dollars, they like staying in their villas and their mansions at the, at the different higher end properties. And that's okay. But when they come down to us, they still bring a good chunk of money to play. So I, we do have a lot of those. So Matt, have you ever been around when a major progressive slot jackpot has been won at one of your properties? You know, that's a great question. In all my years, um, I've never seen those million dollar jackpots hit. No, I have seen even at the D, uh, what was a quarter of a million dollars? That was, that was a big deal. I mean, um, and Derek takes pictures with the winners. I, he loves it. He, you couldn't even tell the person won, you know, it, it, he, he, you can't tell they, they're winning money. Like I even say in a, when people win on the sovereign street, hey, great job. It's on my money. <laughs> you know, it, yeah, is it Derek's money? But he would shake your hand afterwards and say, congratulations. You know, um, but I think 250000 Now, I have seen on a table game a million dollars a lot of times being won. So I have seen that on the opposite on table games. Thanks, Matt. KC High Roller, what is the process to get a marker? Does a casino run a credit check? Did Alan have a huge credit line? Alan did have a, a credit line. He did have a big credit line, but you know, he built up that over the years in a way of uh, credibility. So according to your bank account, and listen, to get a credit line, you have to have so much money in a bank. Now you can have five banks. We just need an account that justifies how much you want to take out. So I always look at it. I'm, a, I'm very cautious at credit. So if you wanted to take out $10,000, if you have 20,000 in your bank account, Probably not going to, and that's the only one you show, I'm probably not going to give you $10,000. I'll tell you that right now. Because I don't know, if you're not going to go back and if you lose, you're going to take out half of your bank account to pay us. So always credit credit customers. You you can go online, like at the D, you can go right online on the D.com, sign up for credit, casino credit, right there online, we can get you approved in a day. And not sometimes you can get it approved same day, just depends on your bank. So you can do that if you're out of out of out of the country, though, it's tougher to sign up for credit. Front money, you could do front money, you could bring down $10,000, put it in our cage and play off it like it was credit. And whatever you win or lose, you, you could take back with you, wire it back to your account, whatever you want to do. But things like that uh, is very easy to get credit as long as your bank account can support it. Let's put it that way.
Richard Greenberg, how did you deal with one of your player who is has a rough time at the tables during a trip? So, Richard, we somebody asked me that about players losing earlier. You know, you kind of if you're good at what you do, you kind of go with the flow. A lot of hosts will disappear real fast, and they don't want to be there when a person loses. I'll be like, tough. That was tough. And and I, I play off them. You saw me on the – if you didn't see me in a documentary with Alan, you saw the way I played that off with Alan. You know, I mimic or mirror the way their, their personality is. And whatever that personality is, I go with. Now, if somebody's really pissed off, then I'm just quiet. <laughs> I just stay quiet and just let them go and let them vent. And, I, yeah, it's, it was tough. That's all I would say. But – uh, I've got a lot of experience in this, so I kind of know how to to deal with them one on one now. A new guy, yeah, I'd have to, I'd really have to read him well. Ronnie C, I was sad to hear Tommy pass. He had a lot of potential. You could share behind the scenes interaction you had with him. Sure, um, what Ronnie's talking about is Tommy, um, Tommy, Tommy Sundstrom, who was on the Casino with me, the reality show, uh, with Mark Burnett's show, we did on Fox. Uh, I was brought in halfway through to to mentor Tommy and Tom, listen, they used Tommy in that because he was good drama and <laughs> they knew they could get good drama from Tommy and putting him with somebody like me, listen, his father, John Sundstrom, great host in the city. He had him to look up to, but at the same time, they wanted him to get a little feel from somebody that worked on a strip that just came in that was friends with Tim and Tom and Johnny D and knew how that those things worked on a strip and give him a little insight because he was dealing with bigger, bigger guests from the strip. And uh, so in addition, uh, Tommy, Tommy was great on a show and Tommy left the, sh uh, left the, the business, the casino business and went out and with a partner and created two amazing hair salons in town, was making great money, was, he raised a family, had beautiful kids, wife, everything, uh, beautiful, beautiful everything. And then tragedy struck and, and Tommy was taken away from us, un unfortunately. And it was very sad. Tommy had a lot of potential. Tommy was a great personality, especially for the casino business. If you know John Sundstrom, his father, you would see he, he got his personality from him and even more. Uh, so we miss Tommy. Thank you for asking. Tommy holds a special place in all our hearts uh, that knew him and worked with him and knew him as a friend. So thanks for asking that. Did they have, Jeff, did they ever blame me for losing? You know, I'm sure I'm sure a couple of players have blamed me in the past for losing, and it and uh, it's not my fault. Listen, all I do is get you to the table. I don't pressure you. I don't pull you by a chain to get there, and I don't sit you down and strap you to the chair and tell you now gamble. I don't do that. You know, I'm your I'm I try to stay as a friend with you. You know, I I'm not pulling you. I'm not promoting you. I'm not getting you, marketing you to get you to my casino. Listen, you know how I take care of people and my players know that. I don't have to hustle them. If I've got an event that's coming up, I may call them and say, hey, you want to come to this? That's, that's what I used to do a lot. But I'm just making them aware of things. If they come, it's on their own accord. They play with the money they can afford to, to play with. And that's it. If you want to blame me afterwards, that's fine. I'll take it. I'm, I'm strong enough to take it. I'll take it. And the next day, you're going to call me and apologize anyway. So I don't care. <laughs> you can... Say every name in the book to me. I'll take it. I've been in the business long enough. It's no problem. <laughs> Ratbone 2001. Uh, if you have only stayed in strip properties of status at those properties, how do you get in with downtown property when you have never played or stayed with them? That's a great question, Ratbone. So, so listen, if you're confident in your play elsewhere, then call a host ahead of time. If I'm a good host, I'm going to call a host at your property. I'm going to know a host at your property and I'm going to ask them, check your play. And if you're legit and you're exactly what you told me, because you know, everybody likes to try to pump it up a little bit. You're a better player than you are. Sometimes some people are like that, unfortunately, but if not, then I would call your host and find out if I know what kind of player you are and you're coming to stay with me, I'm going to copy ahead of time, certain things, maybe not everything you're used to getting, but be, remember during the trip, if you're playing really well, I'm checking you out anyways. And if you've got comps in there, I'm wiping them out. You know, I'm wiping, I'm, I'm wiping out your charges. I mean, if you, if you have any charges on there, I'm comping you, wiping them out. If not, I waste to the end of the trip. And before you check out, it doesn't matter what you owe until you check out. So if you're gambling enough and a good host checks that, they can wipe out charges as much as they like. 
as many as they like according to your play. So if you're confident you're a good enough player somewhere else, no problem. You're a host, a good host will take care of you. David, <laughs> you don't have to bring me a gift, pal. <laughs> what are you mad? Nothing. Don't bring me no gifts. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do any. Don't bring me any gifts. You're good. I'm going to treat you the same way I always treat you. I'll see you next week, pal. That was a gift enough, that super chat. <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. That'll go towards my, my son's baseball. How about that? What else? Uh, <laughs> 30-something Ryan. How are you, pal? Thanks for the support. I always see you in the comments and always saying something. Thanks for the question. Is there a big difference between British high rollers to high rollers from the rest of the world? You know, there you see some. like you, you, the Brit I haven't seen a lot of British high rollers, you know? Um, I don't know. Matt Bridger plays pretty good on slot machines, but <laughs> not a high roller, but pretty good. Um, not a lot of British high rollers. You know, my one of my big high rollers, Don Johnson, uh, went over to, to to the UK and he was over there partying up, buying the big ace of spades, $125,000 bottle and gambling over there. I know he went the opposite way from here to there. But the, the British, no, I haven't seen a lot of big British high rollers. I've seen a lot of European high rollers. Some Italian guys, some uh, guys from um, Dubai, uh, the Middle East, absolutely. Uh, some princes that come in. I've dealt with a, a prince or two, and I'll tell you what, they've, they come in. When, when they come in, <laughs> they buy out floors. You know, there's, <laughs> it's a whole nother, uh, whole nother animal there. But um, no, I haven't seen much of that. I do, some Canadian big players. I've seen a lot of Canadian big players. I just saw a statistic out there that a lot of Australians come uh, maybe not leaving Las Vegas had it on his, Stephen maybe had it on his, but a lot of Australian big players come out to Vegas, uh, which is interesting to see. I guess maybe because they're flying so far, they bring out bigger bankrolls. A lot of Asian play brings out bigger bankrolls. South Americans bring out bigger bankrolls. So um, I guess everywhere has their, their big players. I just haven't seen a lot of big players from Britain. When's the last time Alan was in Vegas? That is a good question. Um, so we finished that in, uh, we filmed that in 2006. I saw him shortly after that in the hard rock. I'd say it's probably been 12 years, 12 years since Alan's been back. But he, like I said, Alan had a lot of tragedy in, in his life. Excuse me. He had a lot of strategy, tragedy in his life with his, one of his sons. Um, and he just went a different route. He didn't, he, he put more into his family life, you know, not that he, he did everything with his sons before, but I think it was very smart to do. Um, and, and he's enjoying life now and, and he's got a business with his sons now or that are doing really well. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him and we try to keep in touch more and more. I'm just waiting to get to Canada so I can interview the guys. So you guys can all ask him questions and see that he's doing well. I can't wait for that. So can you do anything about the Canadian U S exchange? I saw that question. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. I wish Kieran, how are you, buddy? Thanks for the support. I see you in the comments all the time. I appreciate your support, pal. What job offer would make you leave what you're doing now? Wow. You know what job offer? It would have to be something I enjoy doing. Um, and, and I love what I do. I love meeting people. I love doing that. Listen, um, more money is always, always good because when you have kids, they, you know, baseball and volleyball with my daughter and, you know, that, that's expensive. Now they got to go to high school and, and next year and the year after it, it gets expensive. So yeah, you know, extra money is always good. Um, but besides that, it has to be a business that you can actually, um, enjoy doing. And that's the half the battle. So I'll take the happiness over the money, uh, any day. Kevin Knight. Hi, Richard. Did you have any monsters as clients? Uh -huh. How am I going to tell you that? Did I take care of guys that were Italian? <laughs> yeah, I took care of guys that were Italian. And, but listen, I, 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 I there's a lot of things I can't say. And I don't um, talk uh, out of place. I'm a stand-up guy, put it that way. Um, but the biggest mobsters I've had in are the Sopranos. I've taken care of the majority of the Sopranos. As you can see behind me, <laughs> uh, I've taken care of a lot of them. 
Uh, and let's leave it at that. Those are the mobsters I've taken care of. So Bobby G, what's up, Bobby G? Anywhere that Louis is going to do a doc with the opening of Circa. That's what I'm working on. You missed it in the beginning. We're working on it. I got off the phone on Tuesday with them. Uh, we're working on some. I'm trying. I'm trying to get Louis back to Vegas. Uh, we're trying. Louis, listen, all these people want to see you back in Vegas. Come back to Vegas. Let's do something on Circa and have some fun, pal. We're going to have a lot to talk about, a lot to show. So please, let's do it. Ashley Grant, question. What is the weirdest superstitions you've seen? Um, weirdest superstition. So I've seen people bring uh, stuffed animals and leave them on a table or try to leave them on a table. <laughs> Lucky coins, craft stealers. I'm going to tell you about a superstitions. Maybe some of you don't know, and maybe it will help you in the future <laughs> to be aware of. Crafts, crafts players have the most superstitions. Okay. They are the most, they're the most superstitious than anybody. If somebody is rolling the dice, do not touch them, do not talk to them, do not distract them, because a lot of them do not want to be bothered when they're rolling a dice, because let's say they get hot and they're rolling for 20 minutes and you go in and say, hey, sir, you want a drink? Hey, 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 what, what are you doing? You, what do you want to do tonight? You know, you want to show, you want to come? You got to got it. You got to be able to read people and know what's happening on a table. Some hosts even come in sometimes, new hosts, no interrupt people in the middle of a hand. You, you don't want to do that. So superstitiously, crafts, dealer, crafts players are the worst that way in a way of having superstitions. So be careful when somebody's rolling the dice. Don't disturb them because you could be in a heap of trouble. Do I gamble? Uh, no, I do not gamble. If I played the lottery, I might play lottery a little bit if we had one in Nevada. Um, but no, I don't gamble. I used to, when I went away on a trip with my buddies, if it was a casino where we mostly always went, I'd take $500 or 600. If I have friends that come into town and we go to the casino, I might take a hundred bucks up. If I double it, I leave. If I lose it, okay, I lost the big deal, but I rarely do it. I have kids. Every dollar goes to my kids in what they enjoy to do, whether it be sports or their school. That's more important to me. That's where I'd, I'd like to put my money. So thank you for asking that. Has a casino ever hired a cooler? Slop man, Jack. What's up, buddy? Uh, no, you don't need a cooler. <laughs> I may be back in the old days when you see those movies, but no, listen, the cards are going to fall as they may, right? Your, your dice are going to roll the way they roll. Unless you're cheating, you, you've got your odds set in every different game that you play in a casino, right? Slot players know that best. So you're, it's a, ch it's chance. You're still, you're still hoping to go out and, and be a big winner. So they're not going to have somebody, even when they say, oh, they're changing the dealer on me. Really? They're not bringing in some hot dealer that's going to come and change the cards all of a sudden. That could happen. Dealer could have a hot street and winning on five tables. And they want to bring them onto that table. And it could happen. Listen, it's still a chance. You, st you still got the opportunity. You could change blackjack, let's say. You could start pulling on certain cards. You could change your skill level on that. Your money management, it all affects it. So, you know, uh something that something to add to that where is your vacation spot stock cars thanks you know my vacation spots anywhere my son's playing baseball it seems like <laughs> recently if we go to california we just extended a couple days and maybe go to the universal studios i have a friend at universal studios now that is awesome and uh, she takes great care of us at universal studios um and we the kids love going there so we'll take a couple days go to the beach and then go to universal studios and come back home after baseball. I just got back from Utah with playing two days with my son in, in, in Utah for baseball because it's open there. And uh, got back last night, went straight into work and saw Slotcracker, Slotcracker and Ron and, and, and Brooke there. So, uh, and I'm going back tonight. So, <laughs> you know, vacation is far and few between. It's usually baseball. So if I could go anywhere, one day I want to take them to the Atlantis in the Bahamas so they can just – have fun in the pools and, and the beautiful property they have one day, either there or Hawaii. I love Hawaii. I'd, I'd love to take him to Hawaii as well. 30 something Ryan. We all see what's happening on the news, but how is Vegas right now? Are people still enjoying themselves and feeling good? You know what? People are still enjoying themselves. You know why? Because they're getting away from their lockdown States. They're getting away from places. They can't even go outside of their house. At least here you could come and go to a casino and still 
be treated right and, and stay in a nice suite or a nice room, go to a nice dinner. The restaurants are still open in the casino. You got to wear your mask in and then you can take it off while you eat and you got to put it back on when you go out. But you can still have a good time. You can still play all your favorite games. You just got to wear a mask. When you drink and you smoke, yes, it's tough. You got to pull down your mask, take a puff or take a sip and put it back up. Yes, that's the mandate, but it's better than being closed, right? It's better than being closed or reduced to 50%. So um, everybody's still getting away and having a little bit more fun than they are locked up. That's for sure. So Vegas is still a go. If you come, listen, if you're coming from a cr over, over the seas and <laughs> from Europe or Australia and you're coming a long way to get here and we're only open the way we are now, save it. Wait. Wait and wait till our shows open up and wait till you get more value for your dollar. I'm going to tell you that because I don't want to see you come over here and be disappointed. Vegas is not a place you get disappointed at. Vegas is a positive place where you have fun and you live vicariously through the memories you have when you go back to your, your job or, uh, and do your work, right? Because you live through what you just did here for the last week or four days or three days when you came here. You create a lot of stories and you create a lot of fun here and it gets you through your days until the next trip, Right. That's what Vegas is. It's everyone's escape for to do things and to wear things they never would wear or do things that they never would do and then go back and live up through that. So Vegas is still a fun place. Vegas has still got a lot of people here to take care of you and enough properties open that you can still have fun. So if you want to come out, we're here to take care of you, especially at the D. We're still a lot of fun. Lad and lass. has Alan seen any of your YouTube videos? Does he know how many people have been asking about him? You know what? I, I, he would never admit it. <laughs> he would never admit if he saw my YouTube videos. I don't think he would. Uh, has he watched them? Maybe he could be watching right now. We don't even know it. Hi, Alan. If you are watching, everybody says hi. But um, no. But uh, when I get up there, I'm gonna make sure he gets on with me, and we're gonna we're gonna talk to everybody. All right, we gotta do it. I'll, I'll go to his office, and we'll sit there and we'll talk. We have to do it. You guys have to hear from Alan, so you know I'm not full of crap that he's still alive, that he's still enjoying life and loving life. And he's not broke because a lot of you think he's broke. He's not. Okay. Trust me on that. Uh, let's, let's, uh, you know, it's getting, I think we've been on here. I think I'm wearing out my welcome here. So thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's have a few more questions and I'll answer a few more questions. And then uh, if I don't get to your questions, please leave a question in the comments. I answer everybody. I get back to everybody that leaves a comment. So please, if I don't, if I miss your question, leave it down below and I will get back to you and ask you all the, uh, I will answer you all the time. Matt, open one. Lewis is a little bit out there. What did you think of Lewis when you first met him? I don't think Lewis is a little bit out there. I think he's a genius. I think he's a genius and he's always calculating everything in his mind about everything. This guy is, if you want to think about knowledge is power, that's Louis. Louis is knowledge. That guy is full of knowledge. Look at all the documentaries he's done and how much information he's got from those documentaries. Think about it. How much has he learned? I learned a lot from watching him. He goes into the deepest, darkest prisons. Who does that? Who goes into convicted killers in South America where they could probably kill him right there and the camera crew and the guy does it? Who does that? That's a guy that's not afraid of anything. He's out there to get the story to share with all of us. I love that about Louis. He got things out of me. I wouldn't say normally either, you know, and he got the genuine part of me out in the documentary, the way I am. And anybody in this room that has met me uh, has, can tell you right there that I am, I am like that, that that's who I am is what you see in the documentary. I didn't, I wasn't acting. I wasn't doing any of that. The way you saw Louie, I can tell you this. The way you saw Louie when he played with Dan the Man winning that money and getting excited for it, that's the side of Louie. I don't think he expected to come out in a documentary. When he won money and his expression at the cage with me, that's the side of Louie you get to see that shows you that he's not out there, that he's just a normal human being, that he just was having fun and had a good time. So it's a great question because I can see the perception some people might not might see that but no i think he's a genius and i think what he's learned in documentaries and shared with all of us has made us all a little bit smarter of what's going on in the world and what's out there and i appreciate louis and i and i've appreciated him even putting me in his documentary as much as he did because i wouldn't be talking to all of you right now so very cool 
What's up, buddy? I, I saw your video uh, interview with Vito Vegas. That was awesome. Great job. If you could relive one of your experiences in your lifetime as a casino house, what would it be? You know, um, there's a lot of great times. There's a lot of great moments. Um, you know, I, 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 t I talked about, I've talked about in a couple of interviews about Jimi Hendrix's dad. I took care of Jimi Hendrix's dad um, for, the, for the family. So as big as Jimi Hendrix was, to have his sister come in with her, who runs the estate, bring in her 82, I think he was 82 years old. Forgive me if, he's, uh, if I'm wrong, but it's been a long time. Came in a wheelchair and wanted to see Peter Morton's uh, all his memorabilia of Jimi Hendrix for two hours. He was there and I got to show him around all of his son's stuff. And then he went and sat on a black, uh, a craps table and I pulled a chair over for him out of the wheelchair so he could sit on that. And you know, we don't put chairs by craps tables. He sat on that craps table for almost an hour and a half. We took a picture in front of Jimi Hendrix's big display. And that moment touches me because if I could go back, it's because he ended up dying two months later. He passed. And all he wanted to do before he died was see his son's memorabilia in Las Vegas all around the Hard Rock. And I got to help with some of my guys in, Vegas, in, in Toronto that used to do high-level security with me in protection. They flew out to help with uh, the funeral arrangements by per request of Janie Hendricks, his, his, his sister, and, and the daughter. So. Um, that was a big deal. It was a moment in my life that touches my life. And I'll never forget if I could go back, I'd want to spend more time with Jimi Hendrix's dad because knowing that he passed two months later, if I would have known that ahead of time, I would have loved to have dinner with him and just talked, you know, another moment is Tommy DeVito. Here's a big, here's a, a good story. How close I am to the Rat Pack in Vegas is with Tommy DeVito, Tommy DeVito. He's one of the original Jersey Boys, right? If you've seen the, the play Jersey Boys or Clint Eastwood's movie, The Jersey Boys, Tommy DeVito, think about it. He's like a godfather to me. <laughs> He's a guy that lives in Vegas, goes to Jersey. His best friend is Joe Pesci, you know, who I've taken care of him many times with Tommy. Tommy would sit down at dinner and have talks about Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack. Think about it. We only get to see them in movies. I get to talk to somebody that was right there with them. And Tommy was part of the Four Seasons, right? So he was there singing with them. So things like that, I try to take advantage. Tommy's still alive, which is, God bless his soul. I hope he stays uh, for years and years because I love our time together. And we get to talk about things like that. So I take advantage of that because I love hearing his stories about Dean Martin, who's one of my favorites, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr. These guys are legends to me. And so is Tommy DeVito. So for me, these are stories I get to share with you guys. I'm glad I can. Uh, but things that I love and, and always touch me. Uh, let's uh, end with a couple more questions. That's it. John, uh, did you know, John, the blackjack player is not working at an addiction center, is now working at an addiction center? John, you know more than me there. I, I didn't know that. If he is, uh, good for him. I mean, that's, that's great because he can probably teach a lot of people uh, how to do that. He's in Arizona. That's not far from Vegas. So maybe, maybe he's teaching them how. Because, you know, when he was losing, he, it was pretty tough. He, 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 was getting, he was getting pretty pissed off. So maybe he could sh shed the light on a lot of people on about gambling or about any addiction. So good for him. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I didn't know that. Uh, best, Vegas Best Ideas had a lot of fun with you, Belayed. Yeah, we had fun at Canada Bar. Uh, Bar Canada, thank you for coming in. Uh, Terry, thanks for spending the time. I, I appreciate it. I love doing this. If you guys want to see more of this live, I'll do live with you guys anytime. Um, I, I just hate wasting people's time. I don't want to take too much of their afternoons up and stuff like that. I'll do them on Sundays. They're easier for me. I'm usually off, even though I'm going in tonight. But uh, I just I, I want to thank everybody for coming here. I want to thank Matt Bridger for getting me on YouTube and, and being able to do this and share some of the stories. Hog and Two Cent, listen, you guys have been great. You helped me get on today. I appreciate you guys. You know that. Um, Vegas is, is your playground, uh, and I'm always going to be here to take care of you. Everybody else, thank you for the support. If I missed your questions, any questions you have about Vegas is fine. Anything about the gambling in Las Vegas, BBC documentary with Louie, 
leave it below. I'll get back to you. I always do. I appreciate the support. Thank you for coming on. And uh, listen, go and watch some of my videos. You'll love if you haven't seen my content and what's coming up, it's going to be a lot of fun and even more fun. So uh, thank you again, everybody. And reach out to me. Follow me on Twitter at Richard Wilk or on Instagram at Richard Wilk. You'll see some things that are happening in Vegas that I can't share here. You'll see some of my celebrity moments. So by all means, let me know. Hit me up in the DMs. Let me know you you heard this and you're following me so I can follow you back and we can talk there if you're ever coming into Vegas. And if you come into Las Vegas and you come down to the D Las Vegas, pick up a house phone, go into VIP, or just say you're there that you saw the YouTube video at the, the, the one club booth and say uh, a $25 match play that I said that you would get a $25 match play. That's for anybody on this chat right now listening, okay? Go ahead, come into the D, and I'll see you there. Make sure you say hi, and uh, I'll see you all in Vegas sooner than later, hopefully. Everybody stay safe. Thank you again. I appreciate it.